Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is all about the Pro Capture mode that's found in the Olympus cameras. This past week, I've been trying to photograph in my backyard. I don't have a great backyard for bird photography, and there's very few birds. I get like five species of birds in my backyard. I have a hummingbird feeder, and I was able to get these Anna's hummingbirds coming to the feeder. And so this is the kind of shot that I was getting. I was waiting until the bird backed away from the feeder so that I could get the whole beak in and everything. And then in this area over in here, I took out the feeder. Yeah, you can, you know, it's not the best job in the world, but I sort of changed the background a little bit, get the feeder out of there, make it look a little bit more natural. I've been shooting in Pro Capture L mode. And one of the things about shooting in pro capture mode is that you're going to get shots that you normally wouldn't ever get because you're going to catch the peak of the action probably. And the way that that happens is by shooting in pro capture mode because you're recording history on a continuous loop of images, and I'll explain how that works in a minute, you're going to get shots that you normally wouldn't get. Pro capture L or low, it autofocuses with each image and pro capture H autofocuses just on the first image. And this is pretty consistent with all of L or H settings in the Olympus systems. I use the L system because I want autofocus to happen on each and every shot. There are some situations when Pro Capture H will work, but generally I don't use it. Normally I shoot in sequential low mode and I get 10 frames a second and that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. With Pro Capture L mode, I get 18 frames a second, and so it kind of bumps up a little bit there. It gives me more frames per second. I can catch more of that action. So how does Pro Capture mode work? It's a continual loop of images. You can set it up for the number of images in that loop. The maximum is 35. So let's say you take 35 pictures, then when you get to the 36th picture, the first picture is deleted, and so then you continue that loop. It's you can press the shutter halfway down and it will continue to loop 35 images or how many you designate and then it will start to replace them and then when you press the shutter all the way down it will record those prior 30 to 35 images whatever you set the parameters as. Here's what happens with this male Anna's hummingbird sitting on the perch getting ready to leave got his wings up now and then he's off and then he jumps out of the frame. So that's pretty typical with the uh, pro capture mode. It's hard to follow the bird. And so you're mostly going to have these kind of lockdown shots. There's three different ways to set up pro capture mode. And you're going to want to use number one the first time you do it because you're setting up some of the parameters. We're going to go into the menu system. So we're in the custom, uh, custom function panel. Okay, so we're in C1. And then we're going to go into the continuous low settings. We're going to go down and set it for Pro Capture mode. And so we're going to go into there. We're going to use 18 frames a second because that's the max. You can go 10, 15, or 18. I just choose the maximum. Pre-shutter, I'm going to go 30 images. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And then total, I'm going to use 40. I can put it up a lot higher, but 40 is good enough. And then I think we're going to back out of here. And then we're going to go into the H settings. So this is the high settings. So if you're setting Pro Capture H, you can do this one, and you can do 60 frames a second. So we'll set it up for that. We'll do uh, pre-shutter. We'll do 30. You could do, it goes up to 35. Frame counter. I'm going to put it at 40. I don't want a ton of images that I have to deal with in post-processing. So we're going to do that. You need to set up the Pro Capture in the menu systems like that, so you get your parameters set, and then. Every time you use it, you can use the second or third method. One of the easiest ways to get into the drive modes is to press the super control panel button here. You're going to get the super control panel to show up here. Then you're going to go into Pro Capture. You're going to click on that. And then you can use the wheels to go right or left into the Pro Capture. So this brings up the super control menu. You're going to hit Pro Capture, which is right about there on the super control menu. Then you're going to choose Pro Capture Low. And the third method to do this is just to press this button up here. And when you press this button, this way, I like this method because you can do this while you're shooting. Um, you don't have to take your eye off the bird. So you can press that button and you get this menu right here, sub menu, and you can scroll right or left to set up any of your drive modes. Right, so that's the three different ways that you can set up Pro Capture mode or get to Pro Capture mode in your camera. 
Now, why do I want 30 frames per second pre-shutter? You could do 30, the maximum is 35. I just thought 30 was a good round number. It could be any number that you want, but you know, 20, 30, 35 is good to go. You want more frames pre-shutter than in the frame count because you are going to see the peak of the action or you're going to see something that you want to capture and then you press the button all the way down to capture the 35 images, the 30 images that are in the buffer or in that continuous loop. Something amazing happens like that hummingbird coughing or sneezing. Then you press the shutter all the way down. You capture those 30 frames in this case, 35 maximum frames. You capture those and then you're going to pick the one good one out of the bunch. So when do I use Pro Capture Mode? I, there's two different methods for using Pro Capture Mode. You'll notice that I'm shooting at f11. So what I've done is I've pre-focused on this perch where the male dark eyed junco is coming in to feed his chicks. He's got a bunch of bugs to feed his chicks. So I knew he would land there. And so I pre-focused on that spot and I have f11 so I have more depth of field so that I can get the bird coming in a little bit or you don't know exactly where the bird's gonna go so you have to have some extra depth of field there. So I think it works really well if you have a known perch, you know where the bird's going to land, you can increase your depth of field so that you can get the bird coming into the depth of field. You're just going to get a sharper image that way. And I'll show you an image that because of a low shutter speed and lack of depth of field, I didn't get a sharp image. So that's one way to use it. The other way to use it is with this chickadee. I'm just sitting in my backyard. This chickadee comes in and he's been to the feeder and now he's hanging out on this thing. And then he decides he's going to leave. Well, when he decides he's going to leave, I have very little depth of field. And so he's jumping out of the depth of field and I have a slow shutter speed so I can't capture the action. And then here's the chickadee leaving the frame. So method two is, this is like your casual kind of walk around. You can set your camera up for Pro Capture Low, and then you can just see what happens. So I have a fast shutter speed. I'm still wide open here. These birds are mostly on the ground at this point, so I'm not trying to get a lot of depth of field in this particular case. This guy turned really quickly, and I was able to get a mid-turn. And then here's an example of Pro Capture mode where the bird was jumping, and it's a little bit soft, because I think the bird is out just a little bit out of the depth of field. I think the shutter speed was fast enough to capture any action. There's a couple of downsides to using Pro Capture Mode because you're pressing this shutter halfway down. You're essentially taking, almost taking a continuous loop of 30 to 20, 30, 35 pictures. And your battery right here, as you can see this one's red a little bit. And uh, in the next image, you can see that I have zero charge left. So your battery is going to run down faster when you use Pro Capture Mode. It's just something to be aware of. The other thing you have to worry about in Pro Capture Mode is that the shutter can go up to 1 32,000th of a second, and you could end up with considerable rolling shutter problems. And so this hummingbird has two wings. He's got a wing here and a wing there. What I found, if the hummingbird is stationary and just beating its wings, you can have a relatively high shutter speed and everything will turn out. When the hummingbird dives and dodges and moves around really quickly, that's when you're going to end up with the rolling shutter problems. And you can see here that I was at 1 6,400th of a second, so it's a pretty fast shutter speed. I probably could have had a little bit lower shutter speed on that, um, but you have to be, be careful of this and watch for it. If you want to learn more about bird photography and create better bird images, hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to learn even more about bird photography, pick up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, The Complete Guide for Beginning and Intermediate Bird Photographers. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.